record. They might record. Hi. Need to record, right? And then she'll complain about it. Because it'll be too loud. And it'll be, and I'll say, this is how I feel every day, Emma, listening to this loudness in here. <laughs> um, yesterday, Emma sent me a remind message that said, I can't get the textbook to load. And I just responded back, have you shut your computer on and back off again? <laughs> off and back on again? And she didn't reply back because probably she was really annoyed with that response. <laughs> but I opened it on my Chromebook and it worked on my Chromebook, so that was my only suggestion. Um, yeah. Oh, look, there you go. Authenticate, Emma, that's the key. <laughs> um, one, test corrections for chapter or unit one are due today. Um, and today's the last day to retake that test. Um, I'll be here after school. There's lots of people staying after school to take it. Uh, but make sure I get your test corrections today, even if you are retaking it. Remember that the end of the nine weeks is next Friday, which means this is it. We don't have another test, um, before then because it's just not... It's just not going to work out. So, so you the quiz Yes, and so we have a quiz this Friday, and the plan is to have another quiz next Friday. Um, so we're going to have two more quizzes, and then so then next Friday after that quiz, I'll drop your little quiz. Let's both like grade on this quiz tomorrow. Quiz next Friday. Okay, I lost my test. I have my test correction. Okay, let's work on that later. Uh, I want to go over these with you, um, just so we can hopefully kind of make some sense of solving these. The first ones were really more about remembering the unit circle. Remember, every test we have is going to have some calculator and some no calculator stuff. Definitely, this could be some of the no calculator stuff. If it's yes, every test we do with Ivy Tech, there's a there's like a one page front and back no calculator, and the majority is with the calculator. But there's always a no calculator part that's 20 minutes, and then the calculator part is the bigger uh, the bigger section. And our final exam is that way too. We have a no calculator part of the final exam and a calculator part for that unit circle stuff. So and, and that's what they really want us doing for the dual credit classes is that we're giving their at least their tests and final exam and then the rest of it is kind of up to us if we want to do the other stuff. But I feel like their quizzes look like their tests and so that's why I use their quizzes as well because it lets you at least see how the questions are written before you see the test. Um, so one thing on this is it's been a while since we've been doing unit circle stuff and so you had to kind of get your head back in the game of cotangent is x over y and think about where um, does cotangent equal negative 1 over square root of 3 and the answer is at 2 pi thirds and 5 pi thirds and because it says give me all solutions that's where you have to say plus 2 pi in and we said yesterday like at the top of your quiz or the top of your test you can write where n is an integer Instead of having to write it after every one, you can just write it once, um, and then that counts for all of them. I wanted to show you that you don't, uh, like you can always just take your answers and plus, put plus 2 pi in, but sometimes you can write them a little bit more concisely. And so this answer is the same thing as writing both of these answers, and that's because 2 pi thirds is right here and 5 pi thirds is right here. So if you just said 2 pi thirds plus pi in, do you agree that I get you the five pi thirds and then it gets back around and it, it reaches all of them? Not wrong to say this, not wrong to say this either. So it's kind of your choice. Um, if you look answers up, like if you have the textbook and you look an answer up, it's always gonna make the more concise answer. I'm never gonna mark you wrong for just saying it this way, uh, but just kind of letting you know, or if you're like Googling things and looking up answers, maybe even on Khan Academy, not sure. Um, to just be aware that sometimes you can write it more concisely, sometimes you can't. Okay. So, like in the video, you had it where it was zero to two pi. So if we write it like that, would she still count off? It depends on the like. Yeah, it depends on the directions. If the directions here say give me all integers and you only say two pi thirds and five pi thirds, you're not going to get full credit because you only gave me two answers, and there's actually an infinite number of answers. You see what I'm saying? And so that's where you really have to read the directions. And later on on this, like starting on the, like the last two, it says 0 to 2 pi. And if it only says 0 to 2 pi and you write it like this, you're not going to get full credit because you gave me more answers than what it's asking for. So that's where the directions really matter. Okay? Okay. This one is also like this. Um, I didn't find a better way to write this one, but it should have been pi force and 3 pi force um, because that's where sine equals square root of 2 over 2 or cosecant equals square root of 2. 
And I just put plus two by it. So far, so good. Guess who wins? You had five by fours? But five by fours is right. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not right. Three by fours is right because sine is positive. Sine is y, so sine is positive here and here. So right, five by fours is negative. Oh, you almost got me. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's good to think. Um, and then 24, you just divide the two over. So if you just have one trig function with numbers around it, you're just trying to get that trig function by itself. And um, this one, this one is um, pi six and eleven pi six. I got lots of writing on this one. And then after the first three is when things got a little more exciting. So first of all, number thirty-five. Um, it was already factored for you, and so if you have something that's multiplication that you can break apart. Don't put it back together, right? Like it's already set up perfectly that you can just set sine of 2x equal to 0 and cosecant of 2x equal to 0, but I added the 2 over. Whatever's with the sine or cosine or secant or cosecant, like that 2x is stuck with the cosecant, uh, but you can add or subtract the other number. So be really careful with that. Um, so step one is you have to say like where does sine equal 0 and where does cosecant equal 2? And then the extra step is that you then have to divide your answers by two. And so uh, my work's a little messy here. So um, first of all, <laughs> you messed up. where does sine equal zero? Sine is y, so it equals zero at zero and pi. Because there's a two in front of it. I like went around the, the circle again, but for some reason I skipped two pi. Like, but technically if I went the first four answers, it should be zero pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. You with me on that? But I wrote 3 pi, 4 pi, which is also true. So I don't know. It's probably wrong. It was just skipping over one. If the direction said, give me answers from 0 to 2 pi, this is where you have to have all four answers, and then you divide them by 2. But because this one said, um, give all solutions, if you divide by 2 here, and you divide this by 2 as well, you could, um, you could just write this twice, but I'm going to show you. I took all four answers, and I just put plus pi in. All right, so I wrote 0 plus pi in, because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Divide by 2 is pi in, yes? And then I did pi halves, plus pi in. Then I took 3 pi halves, and I have uh, just pi, because 2 pi over 2 is pi. But that's really repetitive if you think about it. If I'm at zero and I say add any multiple of pi, do I, do I need to say at pi add any multiple of pi? No. And so that's where you don't have to, you can really just say the first two if you divide this by two because that takes care of all of them. And the same thing, if I'm at pi halves and I add pi to it, doesn't that get me to three pi halves? So again, it's not wrong if you say this. You just are kind of being repetitive. And so if you only said these two things, that's totally fine. And Sean in second hour, Sean said this for his answer. He said zero plus pi halves in, and that was his only answer. Would that take care of both of those answers? Because if you are at zero and you add just pi halves and pi halves and pi halves, you get all four of them. And so that's a correct answer too. So again, I just want you kind of thinking about that as you do it. Same thing on this side. Where does cosecant equal 2? I always change that to sine or cosine um, because I just think better that way. So cosecant equals 2 is the same as saying where does sine equal 1 half. So again, step 1, I say where does sine equal 1 half? And that was at pi 6 and 5 pi 6. What's wrong? Oh yeah, the, it's it's taken out. Because if you do if you do plus two pi in and then you divide it by two, you're always going to just get left with pi in. And so again, I kind of combine both zero to two pi and give all solutions in the same problem. 
So if this said only from 0 to 2 pi, I add 2 pi to both of these answers, and I get my other two answers. I get 13 pi 6 and 17 pi 6. I got that by adding 2 pi to this and 2 pi to this. But again, since it says give all solutions, you could just take, here I'll show you what I do. If 2x equals pi 6 plus 2 pi n, I just divide everything by 2, and that takes care of um, all the answers that go with that. So that gives me pi 12 plus pi n, which means this one and this one are kind of repetitive, because if I add pi to this, it just gives me here. Again, I'm not going to mark you wrong if you say all four. I'm just trying to say that if it just asks for all solutions, you could just give me those first two. And the same thing for 5 pi 6. I divide it by 2, I divide the 2 pi in, and that takes care of the 17 pi 12s as well. Um, but if it helps you to just write all four and do that, you can write all four. Again, I'm not going to mark you wrong for doing uh, like just repeating this answer. But you got to have the pi 12s and the 5 pi 12s. And if you watch the video for today, I even picked different numbers besides two to show you, like, it doesn't matter what number they put there, you just take your answers at the end and solve for x, whether you're dividing or multiplying if it's a fraction. So we'll practice that some more today if you're still feeling a little iffy on that. Yes? Okay. And then the last two um, were like the ones in the notes. Uh, and the last two have the directions from 0 to 2 pi. And so if you... Um, see this problem? It's like the second to last one in the notes, I think, of I subtracted sine of x over first. Sometimes people want to divide instead of subtract, and my advice on the tips that I'm going to go give you today from day two is don't divide. If you think you want to divide by sine, that really means you want to factor, because what happens is if you divide sine out here, you lose some of your answers, and so if you ever think, oh, I could divide by sine, it really means factor. Like you can subtract it over and factor instead of dividing. And so that's what I did. I just divided the sine of x out. And I helped a few people with this yesterday. And this is my advice for you. If you're like, I don't see that, change your trig functions to just a letter. And usually you can see the algebra a little bit more. And I tend to use x and y, but sometimes it throws people off because we think of x as cosine and y as sine. So if you change like tangent to a, and sine to b on this, you would get a squared b minus b, if you subtracted it over, equals zero. So if you don't see it there that you can factor out a sine, maybe if you change it like this, it would help you think about, oh, I could factor a b out, and I'd be left with a squared minus one, kind of separating those letters. And so that's my advice to you if you get stuck, especially on a quiz or a test. Um, also, a lot of people want to just like say, oh, these signs can go out. <laughs> But they don't because this is multiplied by this. Oh, look, I didn't realize it. It's stuck together. And the goal here is if you can separate your trig function. So if you can make it multiplication, then you can just set each one equal to zero, and then that's where we can use our unit circle. Um, so I'm asking myself, where does sine equal zero? And on this one, I can just add one. And to solve this, I would just take the square root of that. So, um, so where does sine equal zero? Zero and pi. Some people today said, why didn't you include two pi? Because this is what the interval says. And so it starts at zero and it goes all the way back to two pi, but two pi isn't included because it never wants you to repeat an answer, basically. And so that's how it's always written in the, in the interval. So that's why I didn't include two pi. And on this one, when you take the square root of both sides, you do get plus or minus one. So you get four answers. All the pi fours. So there's actually six answers on that one. And then the last one. This one is like the one that we did in class yesterday when we started because it was like uh, cosine and sine squared. This one's tangent and secant squared. There's no way to factor on this one right now. I can't separate addition and subtraction. So this is where you have to use the identity. And 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. And so that's what you have to do on this one to start with. You have to replace secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. And then it's very similar to the one that we did yesterday. It even has the negative in front. 
And so you have to be really careful and distribute that negative to everything. So that becomes minus 1 and minus tangent squared x. Yes. You could, uh, say that again. Just that. Add it, add all over, add it, the negative. Oh, so you just want to write it as secant squared x. Well, add one no, over. Like secant squared x equals one plus tangent squared x. Okay, but then you still got to move everything around. But yes, that works too. So he's saying he just added this over and then you just subtracted two tangent x over to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> So I wouldn't have shown this step if I wasn't trying to show my work, but I just reorganized it. Like I put my negative tangent squared x first, and then 2 tangent x, and then minus 1. And you've got to recognize this, that this is a quadratic form problem. Like it's, this is squared, not squared, and a constant. And so that's going to be factoring or doing the quadratic formula. I don't ever like to deal with the quadratic when the first number is negative. You totally can, especially if you do the quadratic formula but I just don't like it. And so if I have a negative squared term, I always add it all to the other side or divide by a negative. And so this is what I dealt with. I used tangent squared minus two tangent plus one. And although yesterday I was all about the quadratic formula, I couldn't help myself but factor this because it worked out so nice of what multiplies to give me one and adds to give me negative two. I'm not a big u substitution fan. I like to say I don't really like u because <laughs> it's funny. But um, <laughs> but if you don't like it like this, you could do like a u substitution, or you could say like x equals tangent of x, and you could change this to x squared minus 2x plus 1. You just have to remember to go back. And we say we usually do a u instead of an x because that way you don't get things mixed up. Um, but you could pick whatever letter you want here. Uh, but for me, I know what gives me tangent squared is just tangent and tangent. So I don't use the u substitution that often. Um, I just write it as tangent x minus 1 and tangent x minus 1. And then that's just the same thing. So where does tangent equal 1? Pi force and pi pi force. And if you did the quadratic formula, you should get 1. And then you just plug back in what tangent is. And then you say pi force and pi pi force. This is definitely going to show up again. It's on today's homework probably a good chance you're going to see a quadratic one on your quiz that you have to be able to do the quadratic formula and or factor. You broke the wall. I just want you to know. I <laughs> you broke the wall. I broke the wall. Right? Like this? And then what'd you do? Don't do that. Don't write this down. He's wrong. <laughs> and then what'd you do? Don't do it. No. You divide it by tangent x. Yep. You cannot break up addition and subtraction, which means this is nothing. Like, I don't know what you did here, but whatever Still you works. did is wrong. Because you got 2 minus 1 equals 0. Like, what, what did you say this equals? Two. You just canceled this out? Yeah, we had 2 minus oh, 1 equals Oh, no, no, no. Look at like this. What if I had this? It most definitely worked out. It worked out this time, but it's completely wrong math, and you would not get credit for that. I just want you to know. You would get that is wrong. <laughs> you get 2x minus 1 over x. Mr. Um, gosh, what was his name? There was a teacher across the hall over there. No, no. Mr. Allspaw, he used to have a picture up that said this, and then it had a picture of a puppy, and it said, when you do this, a puppy dies. Oh, yeah. You just killed a puppy. I just want you to know that. Okay, but I still don't understand how he just had one equal to nothing. So how would he be able to find yeah, it? No, he divided tangent squared by tangent. So he had one equals tangent. But how his work to get to this step was wrong. So he would not get all his points on that. It was a lucky mistake is what that was. It was the solution. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just said you killed a puppy on the recording. By breaking some walls. Oh. 
I'm like, if I go out yeah, there and like, just, just I'm solving a problem, like, I'm breaking yeah, the law. Yeah, this is like this. There's, um, um, there's some uh, joke out there where it's like sine of x over x equals, I forget what's on this side. Oh, no, it's not that thing. I done messed it up. <laughs> sine of x over n equals whatever, and then you're like, oh, the answer's six. That's basically what you just did. It's <laughs> solved. <laughs> anyway, that picture about you killed a puppy or whatever that was over there, a custodian wrote him a note when he taught here that said, like, she did not approve of that poster. <laughs> but he said it helped learning because sometimes people would be like, Wait a minute, I think I might have just killed a puppy. Is this killing a puppy? <laughs> and then they remembered not to do it. <laughs> okay, so, one, in this video, if you watched it, this is also another one that is a quadratic that I that I solved by either factoring or doing the quadratic formula, yes? So we had one from the notes yesterday, we had one from the homework yesterday, number three right here that you've seen. And then, I didn't talk about this in the video, mostly because I forgot it was there. Um, but these are my tips. And my first tip, Jackson broke, is don't divide, right? <laughs> don't divide by a trig function. Because, uh, one, you might kill puppies. And two, usually it means you're, you're forgetting an answer when you do that. Um, usually you want to try to get it to equal to zero. The exception to that is, like, the beginning ones yesterday, where if you have, like, cosine equals square root of 3 over 2, you're not going to get that equal to 0. Um, look to factor, um, try to separate your trig functions, and pay attention whether the direction says to solve it from 0 to 2 pi, or maybe even it asks you to solve it from 0 to 360, um, or if it says find all solutions, because if you don't read the directions right, you might miss it, okay? So, I have some problems for you to do. I want to do 66 or 67 together, so do you want me to let you work for a few minutes, and then we'll do we'll do one kind of at the end of class. Let's do that. So 11 and 13 and 25, those are like the ones in the notes with your numbers in front. And then we'll do one of these together, okay? And don't forget to have me start recording again. Hi, buddy, old pal. Do you know Brandon today plugged his headphones or some cord into his calculator to make me think he was on his phone and I yelled at him a lot and then he showed me that it was his calculator. How do you plug Or he like just stuck it in the like thing, the the case of it. So he's sitting back there with the cord plugged into it, like clicking on it, and I'm like, get off your phone, Brandon! And he said, okay, and he's still clicking on it. I was like, you still have your phone! And then he held up his calculator. I almost threw the smart word in. <laughs> that's the second time. Tanner pretended to talk on his calculator once, and I yelled at him, and it was a calculator. So, <laughs> But there's a lot of cell phone problems in that class, and so it's easy for me to call someone. Amber Gibson called someone in my class, second period. She called someone in my class, and I'm like, are you talking on the phone? Yeah, she wasn't answering my text. <laughs> so that's what like, they just tried to call you. Okay, enough about cell phone problems. I got, that's the only time I have gotten yelled at. Okay, kids, you ready? Focus in. First of all. Look at the directions on this problem. It says approximate, which means... It also says 0 to 360, which means we're in degrees. But it says approximate, which means this is not going to be on the no calculator part, because if I'm approximating, I'm not using the unit circle. Yes? If it says give exact answers, then I'm going to be in the unit circle. So, I could, but I'm telling you I'm not. <laughs> um, this one, again, you should recognize is in quadratic form. If you want to change them to x's instead of tangent, you can. We tried to factor this in uh, second hour because I thought it was factorable, but it's not because what multiplies to give you negative 2, that subtracts to give you negative 3. You can't do it. You can add to get negative 3, but you can't subtract. 
So that's where we're going to have to do the quadratic formula, even if you like factoring. It's not factorable. That's disgusting. And instead of saying x equals, because x is tangent, I'm going to say tangent of x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Not true. I want to do it. <laughs> that nigga bond that looks like a guy busting an arm. <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> or AC. What is C in this problem? Isn't that guy flexing his arm? No, it's negative one. Well, that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm Use your brain. brain. <laughs> My advice is type this in your calculator so you don't make silly negative mistakes. But negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 9 is 17. I feel like is that one inch close to the like Let's stay positive. Yeah. Yeah. Positive coverage. To be fair, I'm going to try to fix this box. Let's stay positive. Um, so this is why it says approximate. Because if I said where in the unit circle does tangent equal 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4, the answer is nowhere. So there's two things here, right? No. So it's like saying where does tangent equal 3 plus the square root of 17 over 4? And where does tangent equal 3 minus the square root of 17 over 4? So remember, we did this on our test uh, in unit 1, not with this ugly stuff, but with gross decimals. Um, if I want to solve for tangent and it's not in the unit circle, what button do I have to use in my calculator? Inverse. And I'm going to be in degree mode because it says degrees. In you let me show you here really quick, guys. You have to be really um, diligent with your parentheses usage because when you type this in your calculator, it gives you a parenthesis for tangent. You have to tell the calculator that you want it to add the numerator before you divide the denominator because the calculator does order of operations. So you have to tell it that you wanted to do that first, which means you have to add another parenthesis and say 3 plus the square root of 17. And on my calculators, when you hit the square root button, it puts another parenthesis, which means how many parentheses do I need to close right now? This is where the trajectory I say is superior. No, that's terrible. Because you have to do like a million enters first and hope that you're right. You it's need square, two right now. And then you divide by three. Divide by four. And then you can close the last one or not. I don't care. I have to do the same parentheses. 16.6. Yeah, if I want to do the same parentheses. Yeah, 3, 4, 8, 8, 8, 8. No, no. I'm going to just round to one decimal. It says to round to the nearest minute or second or something up there, but gross. We're not doing that. You just have to give it a decimal on the test. So I got 60.7 degrees. If you did it, that's a calculator um, error. And then when you do the negative one, my calculator says negative 15.7 degrees. Is that between 0 and 360? No. No. So I have to add 360. Oh my gosh, this is the most fantastic problem I've ever done in my whole life. Oh, that's so much harder. <laughs> so enthusiastic. And I get that answer. So we've been doing a lot that work out really nice, but they don't always have to work out nice. These ones are easier. I feel like my TSRJ really doesn't go nice. And so. <laughs> 67? 67, I want you to do. Uh, yes. Also, on the unit 2 packet, there's a few questions in there if you would like me to show you which questions that you could do to, uh, to practice some more. I'll be glad to tell you. Um, and we're going to have a quiz tomorrow. So we're going to go over these, maybe look at one in the packet.
and then we're going to take a quiz. There are two questions from 7-1, which means there are two proofs, and there are two questions from 7-2, which means that there are two like uh, like these. And I'll tell you, one of them you're gonna it's gonna be like this, gross. 